Now people were bringing the little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them. And the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and told them, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I tell you, anyone who does not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. Mark chapter 10, verses 13 to 15. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and all the members of the Legion of Michael, welcome back once again to another Legion of Michael podcast. I'm your host, Paul Markle. As you should know by now, episode 80, Making the Simple Complicated. Uh, well, before I get any further, I want to remind you that you can go. If you have not gone to the Legion of Michael yet, the Legion of Michael uh, It's super simple. You just click the link in your show notes there. Uh, or you can type it in if that's your bag, man, if that's what you want to do. And it will take you uh, It will take you to the Legion of Michael Distance Learning, the Church Security Distance Learning Program, and you can enroll and get into it right now. So do it. Be there or be square. And, of course, if you'd like to support the show and share the show, we highly encourage that. You can click the link in the show notes and you can support the show. All right. Why is it that, well, let me stop right there, stop myself right there. I'm not going to begin with a question. I'm going to begin with a statement. The path to salvation is not complex, and yet men want to make it complex. When we doubt, when we act and behave as though it's just not that simple, Satan creeps into our hearts. You see, it is Satan that sows the seeds of doubt in our minds. People will say, well, yeah, I I mean, I know that, you know, I know what Jesus said, and I I know what's in the Bible, and I get that, I get that. But it's just not that easy. It's not that simple. Well, what's what's not that easy? What's not that simple? Well, you know, it's just not that simple. You can't just say, well, that's what you have to do. Say, well... Yes, actually, it is. It's it's very simple. It, it's it's simple to the fact that that what did Christ say? He said, "Suffer the little children to come to me." It says, "For the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these." Truly, I tell you, anyone who does not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And you say, "Well." Yeah, why? Because children have faith. You see, children, unlike adults, don't make things complicated. To a child, the world is a relatively simple place. It's very simple and it's very straightforward. It's only when adults, when those who have been tainted by the uh, the evil of Satan, it's only when adults actually screw kids up that things, that they stop becoming children, that they actually get confused. But when a child is growing up, when a child is young, when your little children, when they look to you, if you have a, uh, a two, three, four-year-old, five-year-old, eight, six, seven, eight, however old they are, if you have a child and you're a parent, your mom or a dad, your children look to you as their, well, as their savior. They look to you as the problem solver. They look to you, and they have complete and total faith in you. They don't question it. A five-year-old doesn't question whether their mommy or their daddy has, you know, what's best for them. They have faith. You see, a child's faith is very simple, but a child's faith is also very strong. Uh, John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, 
that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's it. That is it. That's it right there. Now, there are many other places in the New Testament where, where Christ reminds his followers. He's like, the, the road to salvation, the pathway to salvation comes right through me. You say, well, I don't, I don't quite get it, Paul, and I, I don't quite believe you, and I, I don't think that, that it was that simple. Okay, all right, you don't believe me. Let's go to the book of John. Let's go back to the book of John. John uh, chapter 3, uh, verses 2 to 4. And we're talking about Nicodemus here. Nicodemus, he says, He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. No one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Truly, truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old, Nicodemus asked. Can he enter his mother's womb a second time and be born? You see, this is the verse, this is the discussion where we come up with, you know, people say they are born-again Christians. They're born-again Christians. And when I was young, I used to to ponder that, the the born-again thing, because when I was a young child, uh, I was baptized and I... I, uh, I joined the church family, and I was in the church, and I didn't, I didn't re- really think I needed to be born again because I was already a believer, because I already believed. I believed from the very beginning, from day one, I believed. And I, so I was a little puzzled back then. I was like, yeah, I'd, well, I don't think I need to be born again because I already I believe I'm in I'm in the group I'm I I believe what's being said to me but when Christ is telling Nicodemus this goes right back to the the verse uh, in Mark where the and of course that that story is uh, related in several of the gospels but it says suffer the little children to come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these And he tells Nicodemus, truly, truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. Of course, Nicodemus had doubt. He didn't say, oh, okay, cool. Thanks, I believe you. No, he's like, but but how? I don't understand. You see, what happens when you're born again? What happens when you are born? You become a what? When you're born, you are a child. Truly, I tell you, anyone who does not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. The faith of a child, the unquestioning faith of the child, faith, that's what we need. And when we say, yeah, but, but it's, you know, uh, it's, it's more complicated than that. It's, you say that it's that simple. People say, well, what is the afterlife, or I'm sorry, what is the afterlife going to be like? What can we expect? Does it really matter? You say, well, some people say, oh, yeah, it absolutely matters. So if the afterlife is not set up the way your mind, the mind of man, perceives it, then you don't want to go. You're not going to go if it's not the way that you perceive it to be. Say, so, well, what if what if the afterlife is, you know, some people say, well, heaven is just a notion and the afterlife is actually going to be here on earth when all of Satan and Satan's minions uh, are gone and it'll be here. You say, okay. And then others say, no, no, this is the earth is our temporary home. And we don't belong here. We're actually children of God. And we belong in his home. And that is heaven. And heaven is not planet earth. It's somewhere else. And you say, okay. So it is in either one of those concepts, do you not want to go? Do you not want to go home? You see, we were told numerous times that this is just a temporary place for us. 
God prepared this for us, and he gave us this earth, and he said he told us to have dominion over it. When he created Adam and Eve, he said, let us make man in our own image. And he did, in our own image and likeness. But God, I'm sorry, Jesus Christ said that uh, he was leaving. He told his disciples that I go to make a home for you. He goes to make a room for you. The mansions, whatever word, you know, depending on which which version you read. Christ said he's going ahead. He told his disciples he was going ahead of them. He was going to go ahead of them, and he was going to prepare. In my father's house, there are many mansions. Or in my father's home, there are many rooms, and I go to prepare one for you. If it were not so, I would have told you. You see... It doesn't have to be complicated. Salvation doesn't have to be complicated. And yet we make it complicated. As men, we have doubts. And where do those doubts come from? From where do those doubts originate? Satan and the minions of Satan, Satan has his helpers everywhere. And they want to sow the seeds of doubt in our minds. People say, well, I don't, I don't know if, 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 you know, if that, that version of heaven is the, is the correct version. And I say, compared to what? Well, you know, compared to, compared to what man says or compared to what God has said? Compared to what the, the guy down the street says or compared to what the prophets said over and over again, compared to what that guy over there said to you compared to what Jesus Christ himself said to you. Where is that doubt coming from? Why do you need to make salvation complex? You see, it's right there. If, if we look, it's right there. It's right there in the words of Christ. <laughs> Let the little children come to me, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. Anyone who does not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. It's not complicated. It's actually very simple. God our Father knows us. He knows our nature. He knows that we're going to have doubts. That's why he gave us those words so that we wouldn't have to doubt, so that we wouldn't have to worry. You see, when you worry about, well, what, what, how is it going to be? And, and, and uh, you know, some people said, well, you know, the, the, the dead have, have not really risen again to the second coming, you know, that they're waiting. But to someone who has died, it's instantaneous. But to us here on earth, it's not, and it takes time. Okay. How does that alter salvation? Well, how does that alter salvation? It doesn't. But when you spend time worrying about it, when you get involved into the, in the, you're like, well, yeah, but it's complex. What if it's what if my grandma is not really in heaven yet, but she won't go to heaven until the second coming? What if? What if? Does that make a difference in your life? Does that alter the path to salvation? Does it or does it not? You're like, well, well, no, it doesn't, but but what? You have a very small human mind. Christ told his disciples that one day it would all be opened up to them. They would see, they would realize. The Holy Spirit would come to them and they would be given clarity. Some people have more clarity than others because some people have more faith than others. You see, the more complicated you make faith and the more doubt you allow to creep into your heart, the more difficult it is for you to see the way. And that's exactly how Satan wants it to be. He wants there to be doubt in your mind. He wants you. Men make things complex. God makes things simple. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 
And for you out there, what does everlasting life mean? Does it really matter? What, well, is it going to be here on earth? Is this going to be a perfect world and that this is going to be our heaven or is heaven a different place and we leave? You need to accept it with the faith of a child. When you tell your child that everything's going to be okay, when your child is upset, when your child is crying, when your child is worried, and you set your child on your knee and you put your arms around your child and you say to your child, everything's going to be okay. They believe you. They have faith in you. (laughs) They have faith in you and they believe you and they don't question you. That is the faith that you must have when it comes to your Heavenly Father, when it comes to Christ. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's not simple. I mean, I'm excuse me, it is simple. It's not complicated. But we as, as men constantly attempt to make things complex. We try to make it complicated. We try to fit salvation. We try to fit God into our own little world or our own little mind. That's not the way of God, and that's not the Holy Spirit working through you. You need to understand that. That's not the Holy Spirit working through you. That's Satan working through you. That is Satan casting doubt. Open up your heart. Accept it like a child. It's a free gift. Salvation is a free gift. There's nothing you can do to earn it. You can't earn salvation. You can't earn it with good works. You can't earn it uh, with anything. You just have to accept it. And once you accept it, then you should behave as if you have accepted it. Oh, man. I thank God for giving me the opportunity to sit behind this microphone for 80 episodes, and I hope that... It touches your heart, and I hope that you appreciate it, and I hope that you're ready to go forward and be strong and courageous and be a member of the Legion of Michael. All right, we're going to close it out, as we always do, with the warrior's prayer. Lord, I come before you seeking the strength and skill to overcome my enemies. Grant me, I pray, the wisdom to recognize evil, the courage to confront it, and the strength to destroy it. In Jesus' name I pray this. Amen.